Hey guys, welcome back to another Chief Pep video. This week we're going to close those two engine halves and we're going to start on the left side of the engine. Hey guys, welcome back to another Chief Pep video. So this week I closed the engine. Let's first have a look at what I did. First I had to install the bearings which I hadn't installed before. I heated up my half and of course the bearings were in my freezer. Now you have to be careful tapping in the bearings even though your half is really hot and the bearings are freezing cold. Use something that fits to tap it in. A nice fitting socket is always good. I didn't have a socket of this size for this bearing. In this case I used a massive piece of steel from my hydraulic press and this worked great. For the other bearing I had a nice fitting socket. Now it was time to prepare the two halves and close them. Before I close parts like these, I really like to test fit several times at first. First of all, I cleaned the edges really well. I did so with braking cleaner. Between these two engine halves, there are no prepared gaskets. Therefore, you use liquid gaskets. Make sure when you're using liquid gaskets, that you make sure that there are no open edges anywhere. Otherwise your engine will leak oil within a day. Liquid gasket needs to harden 10 minutes and then you can close the engines. In the meantime, I decided to clean up the internal thread of my engine halves. Just to make sure all the screws fit nicely and I don't accidentally damage anything. To close the engine permanently, there is a specific tightening sequence. Make sure you use this sequence. Due to the tightening, the liquid gasket fluid came a little bit out of the engine. And since it's still liquid, I could easily remove it with a piece of paper. The strange thing is, the engine is on the wrong side to start the tightening sequence in the right way. So I decided to first put bolts everywhere where I could and then turn the engine over and start the sequence in the right way with the right torque specifications. Now I turned the engine over and found the specific torque specifications. When I started screwing in the M10 bolts in the top, I noticed that they didn't came in too easy. So I also cleaned this thread first. and I tightened them at the right torque specification. Then it was time to install the oil pump. First I really cleaned it well, and as always, I test fit first before installing permanently. I put on engine oil where I could and to add all the moving parts before installing it permanently. I installed new oil rings everywhere where ne necessary. Then I installed the inner oil line. Then it was time to install the gear shift mechanism. I oiled every moving piece. And between the connecting pieces, I also put some extra oil. Then it was time to install the oil chain and oil sprocket. Before storing these parts, I connected them together with a tie wrap. This is to make sure that the chain is in the right way on the sprocket. I cleaned it very well before I added new engine oil on it. Now I noticed there was quite a bit of slack on the chain. Therefore, I searched another combination of sprocket and chain from another engine I still have. It's always nice to have spares like these. Then I test fitted that, but this combination even had more slack. So I knew I was working with the right piece and that slack would be okay. The funny thing is, the workshop manual tells you that there is a cover, including a tensioner. Now I noticed from previous projects that not every engine has this tensioner on this cover. So probably the slack is just okay and the chain doesn't need a tensioner. This is a cover that has no tensioner. 
This is the gear with the camshaft chain. There is a left side and a right side. The workshop manual tells you really clearly which side goes where. But if you store your products with left and right side, then you never have to worry about that. It's really important that you time this gear together with your crankshaft. Since I have some spare engines as well, I could choose for the best rotor. I know this is important because the rotor has a sprocket which is directly connected to the starting mechanism. So it's important that I use the, the best of these two. The camshaft chain sprocket consists out of two sprockets actually with springs inside. You need to open it up by using for instance a screwdriver. Once you have the two open, then you can connect it to the other sprocket of the rotor. With a flashlight you can check if everything is timed correctly. I decided to wait with tightening the head nut to the torque specifications. I will do this when I have the engine really sturdy so I can use the right torque specification in one time. So as you can see I didn't do a lot this week but still everything better than standing still. Now there are two reasons why I didn't finish my left side of the engine. The first is that I want to have a dedicated video of the starting mechanism. Now the next step would be to start with the starter mechanism and to putting that together. But I'm gonna make a dedicated video of that. Why? Because I know that a lot of people have problems with the starter engine and I haven't had any problems with it. Um, I'm not saying that the reason why is because I have a special formula, but um, I do think that taking really special care of certain products and certain uh, parts um, really helps a lot with the starter engine problems. So I'm gonna make a dedicated video for that because I also think that a lot of non-subscribers will uh, search for this uh, video and I think it's good for them that they have one dedicated video uh, about this starter engine thing. So this is something, this is a topic that I want to do dedicated to the starter. Now the other reason why I didn't close the left side yet, because I'm considering to do a kind of a chrome look at certain parts. And one of these parts could be uh, the, 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 the case of the left side, um, uh, the, the engine half. Um, first I want to test uh, to polish small parts that I have, uh, also from another uh, engine. I'm going to polish them really nice with, uh, um, with a really high density of uh, sanding paper. And after that I'm going to polish them on my polish tools. And then I'm going to check if this works out nice. And if it does, then I, uh, I might uh, go for the chrome look uh, sides uh, left and right. And then I could finish them and then close the engine because I'm not going to close it and afterwards I'm going to polish it, obviously. Now the last thing is what I might do next week, I'm not sure yet, is um, um, I'm going to paint the lower side of the cylinders. Uh, I've decided to do that for sure. So this lower side I'm going to paint that uh, gloss black. Uh, I'm going to leave the top and I think that will, uh, will uh, look pretty neat. So um, this is something that I'm going to do uh, the coming week probably. Uh, I don't have a really, uh, I don't need it to do it now uh, because it's not necessarily uh, something that I have to wait uh, for. Uh, but uh, this is also something I'm going to do. So two things uh, are up next. Um, the first thing is uh, the first thing is the starter mechanism and um, the second thing is painting those uh, engine halves or those cylinders. So I hope you stay tuned for my next video next week. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done that before. Please leave your comment section, uh, comments in your section below. If you have any question uh, or anything that you need to know, leave it over there. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.